Hi, y'all. We're back. We're going to be discussing manifesting. So I know I always get um, this topic um, request. So I decided to go ahead and talk to everyone about manifesting. I have Mama D Taylor Intuitive. Her link to her YouTube is below if you want to go subscribe. So manifesting. Mm hmm. Manifesting is creating with your mind and your frequency. Um, most people don't really know what the term manifesting is. The word mana or mani, mani, M-A-N-I, means hand. Okay, fest means to, to create, to create something to hold in your hand from your mind and your frequency and your vibration. So if you think... And, and vibrate on a certain frequency, then you will manifest the very thing or the very situation. You'll be able to touch it. And so that's what manifesting really means, right? Physical touch. Bring it in. Into the physical. From, the physical. from the ethers into the physical. Mm -hmm. And so when you doubt, when you have a lot of doubt, you can't bring it because you don't truly understand who you are. I say when you doubt, you cancel it out. Mm -hmm. True. When you doubt, you cancel it out like that. Mm -hmm. So you can't walk around feeling like you don't deserve something. You can't walk around feeling like it's never coming. You can't walk around and tell people who don't want you to have certain things. You just have to walk around waiting and preparing for it to manifest. I have a question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so why... Is it advised? Is it advised that you don't share this information? Is it because of other people's thoughts? Yeah, it's because first of all, people are too sensitive about what other people think of them, and so those people's doubts will start to bleed onto you. Like if they say, mm -hmm. "Oh, well, you can't do that," or "You'll never do that," if you have any type of respect for that person, or if you value that person's opinion, it's going to seek into your subconscious, and you're going to doubt. Start having some doubts that's going to leak in. You know, mm -hmm. so even if you're proud of yourself, they may not be proud for you and they may start manifesting against you. We're all connected. Right. So if they start manifesting against you or, or hoping that you don't do it or they do something bigger to to like wash you out, it means that, you know, they have more confidence in themselves than you do. Mm -hmm. you know? That's how people's men get took. So they're 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 personal. Mm hmm. Um, energy, their personal thoughts and feelings, mm -hmm. vibrations, mm -hmm. interfere with what you're trying to bring into this realm. Right. That's why you don't tell nobody. Wow. You tell them after it's done. Let's see if they what they say. Like, oh, you know, I'm thinking about starting uh, this, this, and that. And then they say, oh, you will never do that. It's like, well, it launches next week, baby. And then when people have negative <laughs> things to say, that should be a lesson as well. You know, yep, I, you I just teaching have them. people in my life like that. Right, you teaching them, I, you know, no matter what you say, it's already done. I know somebody tried to do that. I know somebody tried to start that. It didn't work for them. The naysayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to tell negative people your idea. Some people are so hungry for approval or they need permission to do something or they feel like they need encouragement to do something that they tell people their plans before they execute them. It's supposed to be the opposite. You're supposed to execute your plans and then tell them about what you already did. But the root cause of that, where do you think some of that come from, from childhood upbringing? I think people just want to be uh, accepted and approved of so much because they don't have that within already. Like people that are highly confident are called narcissists. So if you tell someone, oh, I think I'm going to start, you know, A, B, C, and D, and they say, well, that might not work. Maybe you need, they'll start giving you advice on mm -hmm. stuff that you already have planned in your head, right? So the whole point is, um, and then you say, no, I got it. I know what I'm doing. Da, da, da. People will think, well, they don't listen. They're a narcissist. Then they'll start to be upset with you and da, da, da. Well, you already know what you're going to do, and you just execute it, and you tell people after the fact. Because a lot of times people feel like if they can't give you their two cents, they won't approve of you. Or maybe they'll think you're overconfident. Right. And they and they'll <clears> feel <throat> some type of way. So you just do what you gotta do. You know, that's why I had that Michael Jackson t shirt on with him talking to Marvin Gaye and uh Michael was looking at him like, 
who you tell? And I already know what I'm going to do. You know, it's like <laughs> you can't give people advice that already have the plan finished and done in their mind. You know, because people that really, truly know how to manifest, they see the ending first before they even know how they start. Mm -hmm. They work backwards. They see who they are or see the, the result. And then they work backwards on how they got there and they, they start from there. So you can't tell people nothing. They got it. They just show you, you know, and when you manifest, you keep it to yourself, write it on your own journal and your own papers. And when it's done, then you tell people about it. And have them, you know, either support you or, you know, give their opinion about what you've already done. I once did a video mm -hmm. um, and the vid video explains how I, I call it time travel. That cat. Velvet. I call Velvet. it Velveeta. I call it time travel. When you're able to Thank go you, back. Felicia. It's Felicia. It's Felicia. Felicia. It's my girl. I love you. I miss you. I'm coming to visit you. Okay. I call it time travel when you're able to go back into that that, <gasps> that time. Thank you, Onala. Since I know you, Shira, I do not care what other people think of me. I have once again received the confirmation that I see all exist, exists, exists. We all connected. I love you guys. Oh, that is thank so sweet. You. We love you. You got to join my that. channel as well. I yep. love you. Yeah. Subscribe to uh, the... Um, Mama D. Taylor intuitive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I was saying was <clears throat> you can actually take that back from people. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. You can go backwards mm -hmm. to that energy in that time. Mm -hmm. In your mind, you say, all that have been stolen from me, all that have been blocking me, I call it from that time into the present productive. Mm -hmm. You know you can do that, right? Mm -hmm. So I call it time travel. That's just my thing. How you can go backwards or you can go forward. Mm -hmm. And you can Thank reclaim you, all that's been stolen. You're in the level up group. First time seeing Mama D. Um, you're shaking the thing. From the other videos, I love her already. Already love you. Thank you, Gianni. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm a little too much for some frequencies. But <laughs> I'm glad you like me. Thank, Thank you for the donation. I appreciate that. We're opposites, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another, another good manifesting tip is to make sure... You're, you're um, manifesting in your mind and also taking action towards what you're manifesting. Because if you're manifesting something, if you have plans for something, but you're doing the opposite in the physical, then you're not really manifesting. I have an example of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> in dating. <laughs> in dating. Um, I once dated someone mm -hmm. and I love this person. I know they love me. Mm -hmm. But in order for me to acquire the manifestation that I've been working on, I had to let them go. And sometimes good people are not good for your life and not good for your future. It can only go so far. Let's talk about that. Um, I have too many different opinions on that topic because I don't, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't depend on other people for my happiness or I don't depend on other people to, you know, create, hold me back or not. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. You don't care. Regardless of who's in my life. And that's something that she and I talk about on a regular basis. I'm going to do what I got to do. They can sit and wait and watch, but I'm still going to be doing it. And I don't care what they think, mm -hmm. what they say. Now, this may be a revelation <laughs> for, for some of you viewers, but um, I have always tend to be a little bit too emotionally involved mm -hmm. uh, in the past. And she's known me my whole life. And she's kind of helped me get out of that. And so I've been listening to her a lot more lately with the... Honey, do you put you first? Think about what you're trying to do. Don't give too much to other people um, that are not on your frequency. They're not going in your direction. So right, right. you rubbed off on me a lot, a lot of ways with that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I I just feel like you know if you let uh, people hold you back, you you're gonna be held back forever. Don't Sometimes let, you don't realize it. Right. I don't let anybody hold me back. If you if it, if it's not working in my benefit, I don't acknowledge it. Yeah. I remember something you told me years ago. I was like, oh, this person really loves me. And this person, you said to me, are they telling you this or are you, are you telling you this for them? Mm -hmm. And I used to do that. I used to tell myself, oh, this person don't mean it that way. Or they didn't mean to say it that way. Or it's not really how they feel. And I came out of that. Mm -hmm. So we can't allow other people to have too much, mm -hmm. I would say, um, say Mm -hmm. or too much 
um, presence right. in what we're trying to manifest. Right. Don't um, include them all the time. Right. Never. <laughs> Never. Okay. I don't include nobody unless mm-hmm. they're for my benefit. You know, like kids. They're not going to be against you. Um, but the whole point is to stop trying to include everybody in your life. Your This is your personal journey, not your journey with this person over there and that person. It's already hard enough to get your frequency correct. Now you got to try to get their frequency to match your frequency to get what you're trying to get. It doesn't ma- It doesn't work like that. So unless you're on the same page and you want the same things, it doesn't work. Unless you know this person and trust them and their, you know their frequency is correct, don't involve other people. Don't involve other people because mm-hmm. it's just going to slow you down or if, you know, if they're not on that same frequency. Everybody can't go all the way with you. Right. Um. Anyway, I want. Mhm. Mhm. My mom and sister holding me back and getting the bag. Well, then move out, baby. It's time to get independent. You know, you're mm-hmm. holding yourself back because you're still letting them control you, and you're not taking charge that. of your own life. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing can stop you if you have it in your mind. You know, start with how. You got the bag. Think about how you're going to get mm-hmm. it and then work backwards. Well, you're going to eventually come to the point where you moved out of your mama's house. <laughs> well, don't give other people credit. <clears throat> you know, don't give other people that place, you know, that much power. Okay. Thank you, Angie. I love that calling the things that were stolen from us, the time travel blessings to you both, Mama D and Ashura. It's working Thank for you. me. I'm actually practicing. And Thank you. I'm glad. You see how the cat get jealous that our attention is not on her? I know. She ain't, she ain't even You know, Velvet us. used to run from me. Mm-hmm. Velvita. Now she all like trying to get our attention because we're talking to the cat. You know, we can love our family members so much that we give them too much say. Mm-hmm. And I've had to learn myself, like, no matter how much I love people, don't be the reporter and don't give them too much energy, too right. much of your right. your personal you energy. Your once you're over ideas. 18, you don't need anybody's approval. You don't need anybody's approval. Once you're over 18, you don't need your family's approval. Yeah. And they're always going to want to have some say in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, once sometimes, you are legally grown. Well, do sometimes you. they want to live vicariously through you or want to control I come from a very controlling background. <laughs> Trust me. So my mom can't control me. She don't have nothing to do with me. Right. So you just have to understand that most people don't realize that, that you are in control of your own mm-hmm. life. If you can't, if you can't get that in your mind, then everything else is not going to be good. You control your own. How are you going to manifest when you let someone else control your life? You're supposed to be controlling what comes into your life, what, you know, what you manifest and how things happen. But, you still under someone else's control. It don't work that way. Another thing too, mm-hmm. I would like if you if I want your opinion, your feedback if we can. I know we're probably pressed for time too, mm-hmm. but um, I want to ask you something. Um, what about the overgiver, the person that overgives and, and they're trying to manifest, but they're giving away what they're trying to manifest? You understand what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. The overgiver, you know I mean? mm-hmm. the overgiver has uh, guilt. That's it. The overgiver has guilt, and they also have a false sense of how manifestation works. Where does the guilt come from? The guilt comes from feeling that people should be on the same level as you uh, financially or materialistically, and that you want to keep them around as a friend, or you want to prove to them that you have just as much as they do. You know, because it could be either they could be having less or they could have more. So the overgiver is compensating for either for guilt or having less than but their excuse is usually i have a good heart yeah good hearts don't matter because anybody can overgive for the wrong reason and lie say they got a good heart a lot of people overgive so they can uh build up stuff for oh well i did this for you you need to do that for me it's giving the for payback. the wrong reason yeah the, the payback or you know well i helped you you need to help me that's not why you give you should give because you want to and that's it you shouldn't expect anything back you shouldn't be mad if you don't get the same thing in return. And you should give because you want to. And the heart has the capacity to love eternally, even the wrong people. So you could be giving and giving and giving to the wrong source, to the mm-hmm. wrong energy, the wrong, you know. If, if you're going to be an overgiver, overgive to yourself. Overgive to yourself. That way you could never go wrong. 
And whatever you have, if somebody needs it, you always got it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you can always go back and assist people and be generous to people after you've secured your bag. Yeah, because if you keep giving your stuff away, you'll never have anything. You look back, mm -hmm. you never have anything. You thought you invested your uh, money into other people and that they're going to help you. And you look back and you don't have nothing. All the stuff that you should have been investing in yourself is gone somewhere else instead of your this bank This reminds account. me of my friend, bless her, rest her soul. You mentioned her yesterday. Uh, Maya Angelou was a very, uh, very good friend of mine. And you reminded me yesterday when Maya said to me, you do it. Because I would ask her to do things for me because she had more connections and so forth. But anyway, Maya said to me one day, she said, you do it. You make it happen. You're going to get it. Something I wanted her to do, ask Oprah for something for me. And she told me, you ask her. You right. make it happen. People hate that when people ask you to yeah. ask other people. Do it yourself. Mm-hmm. You figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> talk. Yeah. So uh, the whole point is when you're manifesting something, shut up. I, I tell people, women like this on my other channel, like when you're dating someone, shut up. Don't tell them your whole life story, all your weaknesses, what happened to you in the past. That's just going to use it against you. Shut up. Don't be the do reporter. It. Yeah, don't be the reporter. I don't have to shut up. <laughs> just do it like nike says just, just do it and do win it. that's why their emblem is a check is the victory sign just she do makes it the best coffee win. by the way yes thank you <laughs> you're welcome mm, just do it and win so good and shut up and stop telling everybody tell them after you got what you need to get mm -hmm. uh do i believe in karma no i'm, I'm above karma i the reason I don't believe in karma is because I'm the creator of my own life. I believe that karma is also used too frequently as an excuse mm -hmm. to either get into something or to get out of something. Right. Karma is not for everybody. It's for lower level consciousness. Once you reach a, once you reach a higher level of consciousness, it doesn't exist for you anymore. Yeah, because guess what? Whatever's meant to be is meant to be anyway. Look at Velvet. You know. She that. had to get on film. Go ahead, Velvet. Do your thing. And she's something else. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she know. Velvia. Look at Velvet. She's come a long way. I remember we used to feed her the little thing, the little drops. Mm -hmm. So um, manifesting. Manifesting is not as complicated as people tend to think it is. All it is is focusing on what it is you want and sticking to that until you see it through. Mm -hmm. But mind you, when you're manifesting, um, there will be sometimes tests, what we perceive as tests. So you have to be mindful that when you're, let's say you're trying to save money, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in the world is going to want to come and ask you for some money. You have to know how to handle that situation. They ain't nobody asking say, me for money. Don't know how to say no, you know? The whole point is they don't need to know you get money. It's obvious sometimes. It's tied up in, in uh, investments. Be creative at your at your and then Johnson, to thank say you. No. It's tied up in investment. It ain't my money. It's in a savings account. Be creative. I don't get the big check till next year. I don't know. Say something. I, it's only in advance. Sure, you got five hundred dollars. Nope. Do you? <laughs> I might. Let me ask my husband. That's why I use James. He said we can't give nothing away right now. Anyway, um, so the whole point is when you manifest. You know, make sure you're in your highest frequency. That means you're not around negative people. You don't have any negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. You're happy and um, you're investing in yourself and walking towards that manifestation in physical life. You know, you're not making bad decisions that are not going to lead to actually getting it. Prepare for it. But what if you're a person who absolutely just have to have people around you? You have to just got to have people in your life. Well, then you haven't mastered yourself, so you can't master anything else. But it's no fun going to the party by myself. If you if you the guest of honor like Cinderella. Good point. Okay. You okay. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to know who you are. And that's a, another major part. People that can manifest really good don't need other people. They just, good point. they just show up and other people will flock to them naturally. I believe also when you are on that path and you are preserving... Your your space and you're keeping it, I would say, clean of all the negatives and the negative energies and the, and the beggars and so forth and the naysayers. The people that are destined and that are uh, 
equipped to come into your life that that can bring you those opportunities and those blessings up here quicker. Mm -hmm. A lot of times others block those opportunities from coming in. True. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I also feel that, you know, if you think you need people, they will show <clears throat> up naturally. You won't have to chase them. You won't have to break your necks for them to be in your life. You won't have to bribe them. You won't have to make excuses for They're them. They're provided. They will just show up and give you exactly what you need without you even asking. Because I believe we're all connected. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about having tough skin? Um, yes, you, you that's, have to, my, that's my forte there. You just have to know who you are. You just have to love yourself. You mm -hmm. can't care what other people think because if they're not paying any of your bills, it don't matter what they say. Ask them for some money. I'm going to tell you how to if have If they say skin. no, you don't care what they're talking about. Okay, let me give you the formula there real quick because I know we're pressed for time. So let me say this. Number one, look for the exit on the way in. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, always say exactly what it is you feel in your spirit. If they ask you and you really feel no, say no. You're saving yourself and you're helping them too. You Thank can you, be Strawberry. An, you can be an enabler. Okay? Look for the exit on the way in. Stand in love. Don't fall in love. Never let the roof or the floor cave in. You'll always be all right. Thank you, uh, Strawberry Lowly. She said we both beautiful from Tokyo. Subbed her to D. Thank you. Well, I have my level up makeup on today. <laughs> so, right. Having tough skin means being able to also be able to, like, if someone says something about you mm -hmm. and you don't feel comfortable saying it back, don't take their opinion. Because the only people opinion that truly, really matters are the people that are in your life permanently. And productively. And wish you the best. So if you can't criticize them back without them getting upset, their opinion don't matter. Thank you, Tori Rose. Because, like... Like with with a family member, a child or somebody, they can tell you the truth. You can tell them the truth. Uh, our friendship is if, an example. Right. If if they're going to get mad against you and they're not beneficial in your life, it don't matter. If you can't tell them the same thing about themselves and they listen to you, then it's not an even exchange. So ignore. Just like have a file where you throw it, it's stuff in the trash or keep it. What people tell what tell what people tell you about yourself, either trash it or keep it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep it. It's, it's a choice. You could trash it. But we do that with each other all yeah. the time. I you trash a lot her, of stuff. I got a big old trash, trash bag. She'll say something to me and I'll trash it. Yep. I got a big <laughs> trash bag right now. It's like full of trash of what people have told me that didn't that wasn't going to work for my benefit. So mm -hmm. I'll take the trash and throw it away for them. <laughs> you go to, oh, really? She oh, that. that's nice. Trust me. Garbage can. So you have a choice what you take in. You have a choice. Just take it and throw it away for them. They ain't got no garbage can to throw it in themselves. You got a nice big old trash bag over there. You can throw it right on Look, there. I say all the time, the clock is ticking. The minute <laughs> hand never stops to take a break. That's your time. That's your life. Right. Trash you that. Yeah. Trash. When trash day roll around, throw it out. Don't what, keep it. What did Maxine say? Auntie Maxine, she said, reclaim your time. Mm -hmm. Don't let people steal your time and your and your how do energy. I how do I visualize? I see the ending first and I work backwards on how I got there. That's a trick. How, uh, imagine yourself having what you want. Now take one step back. How how did you get there? How did it come? Did it come through the mail? Did somebody bring it to you? Did you where did you run into them at? Well, what you do is you consider all the negatives first. I don't do that. What I do. What mm -hmm. I do is I, I'll say, if I want to make this happen in my life, let me see what can happen if I start this direction. I go backwards. Mm -hmm. And I, it's the same thing you're saying, mm -hmm. but in my way. And I'll go backwards and I'll see this could arise. This could arise. So I do it that way. I'll see the negatives first and then I'll act upon it. I'll approach it in a backwards approach. That's good, too. What do you think? I don't start with anything negative. I don't do nothing negative. No, not negative. Well, you know what I mean. You say it your way and I say it my mm -hmm. way. I just see how I got is, there. I don't see negative I see or what positive. the op oppositions because, would be. Because it could be positive or negative. An opposition can still lead you to get it. Like you might lose your job. That's that would be considered too. a negative, but it still got you to where you get it. That's true too. That's true too. Okay. Because like some people want to start their own business, but how you going to have time to start your own business or uh, some people want to start their own business, but they they have a loser in their way. Well, if you have if you break up with the loser, that might be seen as a negative. So you don't want to focus on that. You want to focus on the outcome. 
first and foremost. And you walk back and say, well, dang, I could never get this far with this loser behind me. So I guess I had to dump him at some but point. But what did the loser teach dump, you? Yeah. How to dump a loser. Exactly. So you just because something is negative don't mean it's not beneficial to you along the way. It might be feel negative to you at the time, but it's going to lead you to your greatest self. So sometimes letting stuff go or quitting a job or, you know, having a, a, a breakup or being injured. So you have to stay home and focus on yourself. But you'll heal. Yeah. So like, say you get in a car accident and you can't work anyway, but maybe you're getting paid or compensated. You have time to come up with all your business concepts, A, B, C, and D. You got time to, you know, research and all this stuff. So in um, six months from now, you have your own business up off the ground and you don't have to leave your house anymore. Unless you're lazy and you just sit there and you don't even see right. that so you have that time. To you got to see all the possibilities and how you can get to where you're going. So that way, when something happens, oh, I got in a car accident and every time I manifest, nothing is happening. I just have bad luck. Well, start looking at it from the be from the end until the beginning. Maybe that car accident is so you can sit yourself down and focus. Mm hmm. Everybody want to rush to the negative. Oh, I think I'm cursed. No, if this is what you manifest, that this is the this is these are the steps that you're getting to the uh, goal. And life happens as well. We have to remember that right. life happens as well. And I always say, you know, I, I wanted a, a different car than what I had, and it flooded out. That was that was a terrible thing. But I got a new car. Okay, I remember that. <laughs> it's like, oh well, new car time, you know. But the whole time I was working towards that. You know, I would if you want a new car, what are you doing? Saving. You can't say I want a new car and a new car fall out the sky. You have to have some money that's coming and that you're putting in the side for a new car or that the type of car you want is in your price range. And, you know, sometimes people don't want to be silly and get rid of a car that's perfectly fine. I have and a, great get a new car because it's like it's silly. I have an example. But if it got flooded out, you ain't got no choice. That's right. We once went to Vegas mm -hmm. years ago. We went to Vegas. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I was saying she was so much younger. I was so much younger. And I was saying, oh, want to go and gamble? Want to go play this? Want to go do this? She would say no. <laughs> we ended up going to a, a timeshare <laughs> to get some tickets for Chris Angel. But that just goes <laughs> to show you we've known each other so long, but she's always been the type of person that would sacrifice the spending mm -hmm. frivolously. Mm -hmm to having the money to save up for something she had in mind. Cause I was ready to go gamble and she had really showed me how, no, let's keep the money and let's just enjoy the vacation. Mm -hmm. And I, I never thought, I thought if you're in Vegas, spend your money. So that was something I learned from her. I was like, if you're going to spend money, let's go shopping and spend your money on that. That way you get something in your head. We went shopping, get but she bought a lot of Michael Jackson stuff. But anyway, so. Get your stuff, you know, and leave <laughs> with some of your hands. You, yeah, if you, yeah. you're going to spend the same amount of money and leave with nothing, you might as well spend it and leave with something. Because I was going to throw away a couple of thousand dollars in Vegas. But I left with it. That's, I, I'll never forget. You were like, girl, we don't need to gamble. Let's go eat. Let's go ride the roller coaster. The roller coaster was fun. So that's how you do it. You don't have to mm -hmm. always... Um, feel obligated to, to to splurge or to treat people or to spend your money because you have a good heart. You can find other ways to keep your money and have a good time and to to use that money as a current as a current. The currency is what they call money, right? Mm -hmm. So money has a current. Mm -hmm. So we have to remember that when you save money, money saves you, and when you are able to uh, yeah. focus on what you're trying to make manifest. Mm -hmm. You're gonna need money most yeah. of the time for what you're trying to make. I'm happen. trying to read so a question. Save it. True. Save. 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 Mm -hmm. I have a difficult. I have difficulty finding a clear vision for my business. It's been two months since quitting my job and healed myself, but now I'm stuck on how I'm marketing and promoting my business. Start on social media. Everybody is online. Everybody is online. You need to find someone who, if you don't, if you don't have a large presence online, you need mm -hmm. to find someone who does. And when you find someone who does, then they will help you market. But you cannot start from scratch online because nobody will find you. You have to build that up because everything is online. Everything. And I always tell people, before you start a business, before you start a business, start social media. Get your social media up. A lot of people are sitting around here thinking it's like 1992. And they think if they start a business... 
and they're not on social media, they're mm-hmm. going to be successful. That's just not how it works anymore. You have to get on social media. You got to promote yourself through social media. No one looks at billboards anymore, hardly. No one reads newspapers or magazines anymore. You stick a flyer on someone's car, they throw it in a trash can or use it as a bookmark. <laughs> No one even takes business cards anymore unless it's somebody, an like owner, a CEO or something, and they're trying to you know, gold dig on them. But the whole point is you must have a presence online and a huge presence or a, a decent presence. You cannot be successful if you are not online these days. Everything is online. That's why all these stores are closing. <clears throat> That's why all these Toys R Us stores are closing and all these major corporations are closing because everybody is shopping online. Well, get yourself, if you can afford it, get yourself, invest in a social media manager. Or just build your own social media every day as much as you can, and if you can't afford one. But, and sometimes, you know, they they give you a, um, sometimes a social media manager will give you a, and nothing against social media managers, but sometimes they'll give you a generic social media presence. Platform. Which may not work in your favor, so you might want to do it yourself for a while until you build up your audience or your, your, your people, then you will hire one later or you just keep doing it. But I say, start original first, then hire somebody after, after they get a feel for who you are. Okay. Um, hi, they saying hi. How can we benefit from Saturn in practice, please? Saturn is discipline and prosperity. You must do what you say and say what you do and not veer from what you're doing or your goals. You must not take anything too personally. You must stay on track Mm -hmm. and you must focus, you know, uh, and and get to your goal. And you must be able to see things from both perspectives. You know, Um, you're supposed to learn from all mistakes and you're supposed to grow into your higher self. That's how you it's, it's a lot of discipline. If you don't have discipline, then you really need to be working with Saturn. That planetary energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Shira, what kind of necklace is that? Is there a spiritual stone? This is amber. Yes, it has a tree of life on the other side. It's amber. Okay, I manifest multiple things more than once. Can you manifest multiple things more than once? Um, why would you focus on multiple things? The best way to do multiple things is to get a manifestation journal and just fill it with all the things that you want to manifest and go on and focus about your day and make sure you're working towards them in action versus, you know, like if you want a nicer home, if you want a better living situation, if you want to go on vacation, make sure you're not doing stupid stuff that's not going to lead to that eventually. You know what I'm saying? My my response to that is. Not everyone could juggle many tasks and become successful. But if that is your energy, that's where you are in your level. I believe it's attainable. But like she said, it has to be uh, with forethought and with common sense. So Mm -hmm. you don't want to try to juggle too many tasks and manifest too much. You don't want to come across as greedy to the universe, even though I believe that it can happen. But just be very, um, you know, make sure that you know exactly what it is you want and you're on point with that. Right. Right. Specific. Right. Very specific. Correct. I agree. Um, because some people can manifest. You know, I'm telling you, I'm, I've been. I Mama D, been your voice is. It. Mama D, your voice and delivery is so reassuring and calming. <laughs> what? I'm a new person after all. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm known for being very comedic. A lot, but certain topics I can't be the clown. You see, everybody loved the clown. They don't never take you home from the circus. <laughs> um, what's the best way to manifest your purpose if you're not sure? I'm 20 years old and have no idea what I should be doing. Um, I think having fun. First of all, you're 20. You need to be having fun. Mm-hmm. Having fun and saving up for what you feel you might want to do later on. Prepare. When you don't know what you want, prepare for something. When the idea pops in your head, you can go and do it without having to start from scratch. Let me say this. Your taste will change seven times in your life. I'm 51. I know this. Your taste is going to change seven times in your life. Another thing. Be very careful not to eat off every plate and you're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's true. So make sure you just have your fun. 
but be responsible by saving money or not making stupid mistakes that are going to cost you money, you know, like not, not, um, like being with the wrong crowd or ending up in jail or, you know, having an un unplanned pregnancy where it's going to uh, spoil so some type of information. I mean, some type of plan that you might have for your future. Be very cautious, save your money and don't make mistakes. Forethought. Right. Be mindful, be discerning, be aware. If you want, let, let, let's say if you wanted to do this and it's not who you are right now, but just in case. You want to do something, don't do something to prevent you from doing it because you could meet someone that may change your entire perspective of life. And then you may want to do this and go this route, but you can't because now you got a giant face tattoo. You see what I'm saying? So don't make stupid mistakes, save and prepare. And then whenever you figure it out, you'll have all the tools you need. Keep everything simple. Right. Everything simple. And that's it. All right. Um, how do I block my kids from negative energy that my ex-husband gives them when they see him in the weekends and come back to me with negative spirits and hurt? Reassurance. Tell them before they go over there. <laughs> Don't listen to nothing he's saying. You know, he, he, this is who he is. This is why we left. Just go over there and give him his weekend and come back. <laughs> That's what I would tell. Mm -hmm. Don't come back here with none of that BS. If you do, keep it to yourself. I don't want to hear it. They're asking, how do you deprogram them? You can't. They don't, they're going to figure out what they want. They'll be able to discern for themselves. They have their own minds. The kids today, <laughs> they are, they know. So thank they're you, good. Thank you, Solel Moon. They have you for a parent. They're good. Love you both. How to overcome anxiety and fear. Face them. Face your fear and plan out your life. Anxiety there comes from no plan. It is no monster under the bed. Yeah. Most people that have anxiety don't know what they're wanting to do with their, their lives. Write out what you want and plan it. Write down, get a planner and plan out everything you need to do. Fear, face all your fears. Mm -hmm. That way they're no longer fears. That's the only way to do it. Only way. Yeah. There is no it. such thing as, as right. fear. You fear can't, is an illusion. There's no way around that. Either you face it or you stay where you are. Mm hmm Thank you, Tori Rose. I tell my daughter five years old about her dad all the time. Be false honest evidence appearing real. Right. Mm -hmm. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Yeah, just reassure your kids. Let them think what they want. What they said. I don't have my glasses. I can't see now. They're asking if you're my mom. No. No, I'm not my <laughs> mom. But I'm like a mom. <laughs> Fear is an illusion. Exactly. I love y'all. Hey, building my website for my business right now. Taking action. Good for you. Honestly, I'm living for this energy. So grateful. Yay, sunflower seeds. Um, is it a good time to work with Jupiter? When, whenever you want to work with self, work with. You know, don't ask people's permission. What do you need to work with right now? You know what I'm saying? Everything you need is within you. How do you feel about it? Always asking people for information may be your downfall because they could tell you something wrong. If you feel good about working with Jupiter at this time, work with Jupiter at this time. Okay. <clears throat> How do you not let having small kids hold you back? Because I work from home. You know, I can do your <laughs> natal chart so we can find out where your positions are. Right. But um, what was that question? Well, how do now? I not let small kids hold me back? Because they're my priority. They're what I get up in the morning for. They don't hold me back. They push me forward. It depends on what type of parent you are. You know, if you wake up so your kids can have a good life, they will never hold you back, but only propel you further. The only time people feel like their kids are holding them back is if they're not doing everything for those kids. I feel like a person who may be selfish. Well, I'm selfish, but I'm, I'm selfish. I don't mean selfish in the way you're selfish. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm, I want to clear one thing up. You can be selfish for your family. You can yes. be selfish for your household. You can be selfish for your kids. You can be selfish because, you know, if you don't take care of you, you can't take care of them. But you need to take care of you because you want to take care of them. And you brought them here. Right. So you have to, they have to be the reason you wake up in the morning. No one asked the trick question. Should you come before your kids or should your kids come before you? Think about that. And someone asked me 
what asked me that question, do, do I come before my kids or do my kids come before me? And my answer to that is you should always come before your kids because without you, you can't, you won't be there for your kids. So you have to take care of yourself. You have to come first in that sense. So you come before your kids. That way, you know, you're there for them and you can secure their lives in the future. Mm -hmm. But I have no kids, but I only know that that's just common sense. But you got to. Yeah. I know people that have kids that if they didn't have kids, they wouldn't even be as successful. I know that's how I would be. Like if I didn't have kids, I wouldn't be successful. I sleep all day. I wouldn't be a coming, getting out the bed until afternoon. Oh, so you would do what I do. I would do exactly what you do. Well, why are you always preaching to me about how long I sleep? Because I see that you can be much more productive and, and all that. <laughs> Because you could be much more productive. I had to learn that through Girl, having kids. I'm productive when I'm up at night doing my thing. Well, whatever works for you, I'm just saying. There's more hours I in the day. Got her. She always said, Mama D, get up. It's early. You know, get up and don't just lay there all day. Get up. Because I'm going to be making be noise. You don't let's have to get, get up. Let's anyway. take pictures. Let's go do this. Let's run errands. And I'm a girl, look. When I come over here, I'm on vacation. Well, I mean, I'll be mad too if I didn't have kids. Yeah. I have to get up. I have to take Tasha somewhere. She came to my house and was trying to make me get up at nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Come on, we got plans to do. But the thing is, you, when you love your children, you're going to do just what you're doing now. You're going to try to find every way to secure their safety and, and their livelihood. Thank you, you SBT. What an awesome parent. I don't think that people truly realize the gold you queens are providing for free. I have to credit where credit is due. Oh, thank you. Who is that? Stay Who said that? And keep rising. SBT. You got to join me. I want, I want to be your friend. I love you. I love positive energy. Yeah. Uh, Y'all can go to her YouTube channel, Mama D Intuitive, and it's linked below in the description. You know, I'm learning to love my trolls, too. Yeah. And like, you know, you gotta pray for them. to be on YouTube, to be on social media, you are going to get negative backlash. You're going to get trolls. Don't let that stop you from doing what you got to do. I know some people, you know, some people can't take it. And it's like, I was born in the era where bullies were common. Girl, they be trying to pit us against each other. I was born where I had to fight in the kindergarten against bullies. I mean, I was born where it didn't in the era where it didn't matter if somebody <sighs> said something bad to you. You have to you have to be tough in this world. The world ain't fair. It never will will be. It never will be. It never was. And I don't know why people think it is. You know, people, we people are, love each other. People are so too sensitive. Much. And some people right. will try to pit us against each other. They don't know how deep the love go. They, they try to pit anybody against anybody. Yeah. Don't, it don't even matter. They try to pit me against <laughs> people I don't even know. But you know what? <laughs> it ain't going to happen, baby. I don't care enough about other people to even be mad at them. That's the whole point. She tell me all the time that, Mama, you're too sensitive. Your heart's too big. Sometimes yeah. you just got to be really like, like, see, like People come and say, well, did you see this person's channel? I was like, I don't know that person. I don't watch their channel. I don't care. I mean, you she's know, her. and so the whole point is you can't care about everything. No. You only need to care about what's important to you and what is beneficial to you. But what I do if care you, about what? is that what we do mm -hmm. helps someone. Right. That's all we care about. Right. So you can't care about everything. You got to pick and choose mm -hmm. what you care about. You pick about a couple of people but that you care about. Good heart. I don't care. See, that's how easy it is. I don't care. So. <laughs> Pick a certain amount of people. Three is good. Three or four. But I Keep give your circle too much. small. I give too much. Well, be given to yourself instead. Put put a different name on your bank account and trick yourself into giving back to yourself. Okay. <laughs> but the whole point is, you know, doing too much for other people will leave you with nothing. Okay. So do for yourself, manifest for yourself. I, I know a lot of people say, well, why would you manifest? Why wouldn't you manifest for other people? And why would you use it for selfish reasons? Because I can't help nobody unless I got what I need to have. Well, you will do all that for other people. They won't appreciate it anyway. And then you're enabling them. Teach right. a man to fish on and you'll feed him a lifetime. Well, I need to manifest this person and help them. And, and I, I, I'm not a selfish person. Well, they might not want you manifesting for them. They may already have their manifestation going and, and, you know, maybe what they what you want for them is not what they want for themselves. They may not be on the planet as long as you will. Right. And you know how uh, a lot of people say, oh, well, I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to I'm going to pray. I don't want everybody praying, praying for me. Yeah. I don't want nobody praying for me. I don't want everybody praying for me. I don't know who they praying to. And they pray I may not even get past the ceiling. Honey. Right. And and when people say, oh, I'm going to pray for you, it just means that it, it's a negative connotation as, you know, well, since you ain't listening to me, I'm going to force my opinion on you through prayer. And hopefully the, the God or whatever is going to 
force it in your life anyway because you ain't listening to me. It's it's a word. It's it's a type of control. That's what religion is. It's control. So since you ain't listening to them, they say, "Oh, I'm gonna go above your what head and try to pray for you." Like ain't nobody. You know what? I'm a I'm a I'm a hope that you good. Prince said. Save your prayers. Save your prayers, right? <laughs> I was like, okay, you can pray all you want. It ain't gonna work because I already got what I need, uh, and I'm it's already done. Okay, so you gonna have to pray to undo it, and that's called a curse. <laughs> so you gonna go from praying to cursing? Thank you, Michael. Thank you for the donation. Thank you so much, Michael. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'll say this all the time. I don't want no wife's prayer for me. I don't want nobody praying for me. Uh, mm -hmm. don't uh -uh. Pray. I pray for myself, honey. I grew up in a church and I've been there already. Okay. Right, right. I mean, so is it safe to do me? spell work and get your cards read while you're pregnant and take your it's safe to do whatever you feel like you need to do. Like I'm not a doctor. It's I'm gonna tell you something right you now. You can't ask me those questions legally. This is what I do. <laughs> this is what I do. Okay? okay. So I'm gonna tell you something right now. If you already come in with that mindset. Don't even step into it because you're already cursing yourself. We curse ourselves, by the way. Right. So no one has the power to curse you. Never no, forget that. Knowledge is power. Right. So if you don't know, then don't do it until you learn about it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Are there any protection spells for kids? Yes. Mm -hmm. Prayer for the Um, I would just say um, teach them knowledge is protection. The more they know. Like if they're too little to understand, you know, um, then of course your love and your frequency for them is going to protect them. But if, teach them about themselves and who they are and how powerful they are, you know, because the more they know, the higher they vibrate and anything lower cannot touch them. But I want to speak on that as well. I mm -hmm. feel like <clears throat> this is what I believe. Okay. Now we might differ a little bit, but mm -hmm. this is what I believe. I believe that as a parent, um, you have been endowed with special powers and special gifts over your children. So speak over their lives. Speak over your children, okay, positively. And know that the creator, the source, um, has your back with your children. But you have to speak on this. They call it prayer or whatever you want to call it. And you can create a territorial protective bubble around your children that will protect them wherever they go. So you speak that over their lives and believe it, expect it, and you will see it manifest. And so your children are already all right. Mm-hmm, true. What? I mean, I believe that too. I just what? believe the other stuff too. She agree too. with me? Do you still work with deities? Do you, can't imagine it? Yeah, but see, I, the whole point about that is, oh, thank you for the donation, by the way. The whole point about that is, is they're not deities to me. You see, I, they're just frequencies, you understand? So when you work- Representations. Right, when you work with deities, you're working with frequencies. So I don't see them as deities. I see them as aspects or frequencies. But you can't look at them like they're above you. Because if you if you get to a certain level of consciousness, it's just an energy. Okay, you see this cup right here? You see this cup? This cup represents something. It could be a deity. It could be whatever, but it's what it represents. I could use a, a piece of paper with the image on it that represents the same thing this cup represents. It's tapping into the energy. It's using that particular uh, image and that, that physical manifested, created, tangible uh, thing so that you can have that connection so that it can go into the universe so it can return as a material manifested experience. What mm -hmm. you think? That's why they do that in the churches and all that stuff. They have the statues and all that good stuff. Um, it's just a visual, a point of contact. Right. Well, thank you. Who was that? And I don't have my passes. I can't see. Thank you, Marcella, Leon. She or did you practice magic while pregnant? I was very young when I was pregnant. So um, I read, I was reading books. I was getting knowledge. You know, I don't believe what I don't believe in is practicing uh, practicing magic before you get any type of knowledge. Read. Well, I remember when you first started with the tarot cards. I think you was fifteen. Yeah, but I wouldn't break it if you. I remember that. Yeah, I, no, I was actually longer. I was than actually that. younger than that. I was in junior high. You was in junior high. But the whole point is, have those read, get some knowledge, get some knowledge while you're pregnant, because mm -hmm. you'll be able to absorb much more. Thank you, Janice. 
Is it wise to write the time and date on your nope? Because there's no time. It's something I want to talk about real fast. Thank you for the donation. There is no time. Why are you there's putting no a time, time limit on it? <laughs> That's right. Um, another thing, too, uh, a lot of times people will come to me for work and they will say, do I need to have the name of the person or do I need to have the birthday and all that stuff? If it's not astrology, no, because the universe knows who they are. And so do you. We got to wrap it up. Got to wrap it up. Well, thank you for being on the video with me. And thank you all for the great questions. But remember. And like, the compliments. Right. Knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. The more knowledge you have, think, let's think about it like this. The more knowledge you have, the less you have to worry, the less you have to fear, the less you have to um, doubt yourself. And the sooner everything that you're working so, towards comes into your reality. Right. If you're pregnant, get books, read. Uh, use that time to get some knowledge. And don't feed your negative doubts. Right. Replace them with positive you know, feedback, positive energy. Thank you, Glam Up. Glam up. Hey, glam me up. How do you fall in love with yourself? I lost myself while being in a relationship with an ex. I once loved myself dearly before I met him. Um, have his funeral, act like he's dead, never go back. Oh, excuse me. Um, you have to start doing for yourself every day. Like every day you wake up, wash your face, um, do something that you enjoy doing, put your makeup on, get your hair together, put on a beautiful outfit, take some pictures, smile, you know, go out. Don't let yourself miss them. Right. Do everything you need to do for yourself. Don't let yourself miss them. Remember right. all the dirt they've done and all the things they've said and how they have stolen your energy from you and you want that back. Right. That's how you do that. Okay? I don't even think about that. Which I don't even remember their name. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm too busy trying to put these lashes on. I have been there. And get free stuff. I have been there. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you how I got out of that, how I started loving myself again. Mm -hmm. I started to, re every time I thought about that person, I remembered what they said or done that hurt me. And some stuff is unforgivable because when people truly love you, they're not trying to hurt you. True. They build you up. Right. On that note, we got to go. Yeah. So just worry about how you're going to get something, a free service today. But I love you. Okay. I got free okay. stuff yesterday, free stuff the day before because I was thinking about you know, what I look like when I leave my house. You look good. You feel good. You make other people feel good. They want to give to you. I'm going to tell you something. I have my lipstick on today because she kept getting stuff for free. I said, Told you put me some lipstick on. She kept getting everything free yesterday. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. <laughs>